I'm Stacy, and we will be talking about grooming right now. So Quinn is in the tub, and just to tell you ahead of time, you will be seeing a lot of calming signals from him because this is not his favorite thing. So the first step to grooming is shampoo, and you can use any dog shampoo. Don't use a person shampoo. I'll give you a glimpse of Clint, Quinn. Don't use a person shampoo because they, um, dogs have a different pH balance and it will, um, <laughs> Quinn Oakley isn't helping. First, you just rinse them all down and make sure that you actually give them a bath with soap and water, with shampoo and water. Please do not try to use a dry shampoo because really that just adds to the stuff in them. It works well to get rid of grease, but um, it does not work so well for um, getting rid of germs and stuff like that. So we want our dogs to be cleaner than most kids who walk through the building, um, as if you were going into a cancer ward. So there are three levels of grooming. I'll just talk to you about this while I rinse them down. And I have not applied the shampoo yet. Um, hey, Quinn, come on this side. Hey, Quinn, come on this side. Come on. Come this way. They feel a lot more threatened if you move them yourself and you force them. So to give them a choice really helps. There you go. Go the way. I also have a mat in the bottom of my um, tub so that his feet feel secure and he knows he's not going to slip. Okay. Back to the three levels of grooming. Um, the first level of grooming is as if you were going to a cancer ward and someone who has absolutely no immune system. So when I do his head, I just put my hand over the top of his eyes. That's probably why you like the other side because he needs that better. Good boy. Um, so he doesn't get any water in his eyes. So the first level of grooming is as if someone has no immune system at all and we want them to be totally spotless. They need to have been bathed within the past 24 hours. Um, sooner if you can. I mean more close to the time that you leave if you can. They just need to be completely clean. Level two is if you're going into a care center or something like that where people aren't necessarily, they, they need health care, but they don't necessarily, they aren't sick. They don't have immune system problems. Um, so they need, to be, they need to be really clean. You need to be able to stick your nose down into them and not smell bog or dirt or anything else. But it doesn't have to have been within the past 24 hours. So it could have been within the past week. Um, they just need to be really clean, but they don't need to be um, germ-free completely. And level three is as if like you're going to a scout troop or a library out in the public where, oh thank you, he's lifting his feet for me, out into the public where um, people who are healthy are coming to visit with you and your dog or other animal. So um, in that case, they still need to be clean. You still need to be able to stick your nose down in there and um, not smell anything. You need to be able to run your hands through their fur and not throw any mats. Um, but they do not have to have been bathed super recently. Um, um, our evaluation will evaluate for the first level of grooming as if you were going into the cancer center of a hospital to show us that you know how to groom um, to that level. Now, let's talk about anal glands. You do not have to squeeze out your dog's anal glands if you've never heard of those. They're little glands that are right below their little bum right there. Um, and they smell horrible when the dog expresses them. And groomers will normally do that for you. I used to not express them, and then Quinn, bless his heart, expressed them on a hospital bed once, and it was awful. I was so glad I had a um, sheet underneath us, but he expressed them on the hospital bed, and that's the last time I did not express them for him, because that way I can choose where they're expressed. So when I do it is when I have shampoo all over them, 
and you put your hands underneath and you just go like that, you'll come away with gross, disgusting oop that smells horrendous. And that way, if he's still covered in shampoo, yeah, I know, buddy. That could also be why he doesn't like face destruction. And it's easier to wash away. Um, and then he won't, he doesn't able to choose when he expresses them, like in the hospital bed. Or, you know, anything else that you would rather not have him express them in. Okay, I'm going to rinse him right now, and I will meet you back in just a second for ears. Um... So that was the first wash. I'm gonna do that one more time. Also, two more things. One is you can totally go to a dog wash and do this. You don't have to do it in your own tub. He also has pitch between his toes, so I'm feeling between his toes right now. Um, and you can also use one of these that goes in your drain, which helps to catch hair that might clog your drain. And those are super handy. Um, so I'm going to wash him one more time and I'll catch up with you in just a minute. Okay, so this is a product. It's called Spa Fresh by Tropiclean. And I love it. It smells like blueberries. And um, it's tear free. And it gets away all that. Um, if your dog, everybody's like, I know. I feel too face all day feel. Um, if your dog gets any like tear stains or any like gunk down by their mouth, you can get rid of any of that um, waxy substance down there. Um, I use this all down by their mouth and up by their eyes. It is tear free, so it doesn't hurt them. You really just need to rinse off their eyes afterwards. I also use this for their ears. Okay, come here, love. I'm not sure if you can see, but he has like a little bit of gunk right there. So I'm just gonna go through. Yeah, good boy. Clean out any of that stuff you might hear I have on his ear flap. And they get ear gunk so fast. So if you clean this out the night before you go, check it again right before you leave. We have had many dogs that we have had to stop the evaluation for, unfortunately, because of ear gunk. Okay, one important thing is that when you rinse their heads or do their heads, when you're doing the top of their head, push their heads up so that the water doesn't go into their eyes. Hang on, buddy. You can see I'm rinsing it all out of his eyes. Hopefully you can see that. It's hard to tell on a GoPro because I can't see what you're seeing. See that? And now when I do the bottom of his head, I'll do his chin while his head's up like that too. See all the shampoo. And I want them to hate this as little as possible. Okay, now I push his head down and that's when I do his muzzle because I don't want the dirt to go down his nose. And you can see all, well, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a lot of dirt coming off that nose of his, and I know where it goes, which is not a place that is sanitary. So it does need to be washed. I'm not putting water into his nose. I'm just putting it on it, on his muzzle, and then I rub it down so it doesn't go up his nose. At least that's the plan. And then hopefully it will be as the least traumatic as possible. Good boy. If your dog has mats, if they're snarly, a great time to get out those mats is when they're all goopy with conditioner. Um, if they're all slimy with conditioner, that will help um, those mats to, to get out because they're all slimy and that sliminess helps. I will also show you some other product in a minute that um, really helps with mats, especially if you have doodle type dogs that have that straight hair mixed with curly hair. Once you're done, and before you dry them, you get lots of treats because that's never lots of fun. Oh, there you go. 
I know you did so good and you survived. Yes, you did. Good boy. Okay, um, let's talk brushing. So if you have a dog like mine who's really curly, it's highly possible that you will get mats sometimes or another. Please do not try to get mats on dry hair. It will hurt them. It will hurt your feelings because they will be hurt and um, they just will really learn to hate brushing a lot. So um, what I recommend, um, I already mentioned this once, is to try when they're really slimy with conditioner. Another thing that I recommend that really works well is called Cowboy Magic and it looks like this, although this is a really old bottle so it might look differently now. Um, or it might look different now, not differently. And um, the other thing that I love is called um, Crown Royal, not the drink, sorry. Um, it looks like this and is Crown Royal number three and it works amazingly well. It's really, really highly concentrated. So you put it in a spray bottle about this much of the product and then the rest of it with water and um, then you can just spray it on them. So I almost never brush my dogs without some sort of grooming spray because um, it helps, it has a little bit of silicone in it and it helps the brush go through it easier and your dog will like brushing a lot better and they won't fight you when you try to brush them. You can also see, I'm just gonna point out, his head is down, his tail is down. <laughs> grooming is not his favorite thing. Um, this right here is also part of a vet clip because he had an IV last week. He was at the vet for a little bit, but he's fine now. So um, I'm just gonna show you the different kinds of brushes. These are called slicker brushes. They work really well for dogs with curly hair. This one, and I'm, let's see if it'll zoom, if it'll work on, if it'll get those. Those um, right there are kind of short um, bristles. This one right here is like the mother of all the slicker brushes. It's the Coral Pink Slicker Brush, Chris Christensen, and it is the bomb. It will totally work and it gets through long hair um, that otherwise most brushes won't get through. Um, and it will be your friend. Every mat needs to be out. There can't be any mats behind the ears, under the collars, in the armpits, anywhere. Um, so that's why I, I tell you about all these things. Um, so I'm going to brush him out right now and it will take a while. So I'm not going to make you sit here with us. Um, so I'm just, I'll start and then I'm going to turn the video off so you don't have to hang out here with us. Whoops. Let's make that a little better spray. There we go. So I spray him down. There we go. And I force dry him, which gets out a lot of mats already. Whoops, wrong one. That's an old one. My favorite is this coral pink one. And I just see how quickly that just goes right on through. And he will, I can hear it kind of. And... These combs have two sides to them. One of the tines are further apart and the other one is close together. The one that's close together should be able to go through every part of their hair. Um, that will show that they have absolutely no mats. It's gonna give him stress before he goes on a visit and I don't want that. I want him to be calm and relaxed. So I try to do all this the night before I go. Let's talk about the things you do the day of the visit. So we're gonna start at the nose and work to the toes. So first starting with his nose is teeth. Okay, let's talk teeth. Um, teeth need to be clean. They really can harbor a lot of bacteria. So we are not vets, but if there is a red line that goes along the gums, we will pass them in the evaluation with approval of a vet. And if your vet says that the teeth need a teeth cleaning, then that will have to happen before um, they can become an official therapy animal. All right, so I have a couple of favorite products. My first favorite is called Pets Life, and this comes in um, a gel that you can brush on, and it also comes in a spray that you can spray on. I have found more luck with the gel that you brush on because you can get a lot of gunk off their teeth. Um, I also like this, it's called Petrodex, and I think it comes in red because um, people act, well, I accidentally put it on my toothbrush once and it's flavored like chicken. 
which is really disgusting. Um, I didn't quite get it up to my mouth. It was early in the morning. I put it on the toothbrush and brought it up here and smelled it. And I was like, oh no. Um, so there are all sorts of different kinds of pet toothbrushes. Um, they're the kind that are big, that are small, that have three different surfaces on them. They're all different kinds. You can use any kind you want to. I prefer not to even buy separate ones. I just use my old toothbrushes on my dogs. So when I'm done using them, I wash them in the dishwasher, which I probably don't even need to do. And then here's an old one of mine. I just retired this one from myself last month, and this is now a dog toothbrush. So um, here's how I, well, when I start out, if you at dog, if your dog has never had their teeth brushed with a toothbrush, bless him, bless you, Gwen. If your dog has never had their teeth brushed with a toothbrush, don't go at them with a toothbrush because they're gonna think you're trying to kill them. Instead, start out with your finger. Um, just put a little bit of toothpaste on your finger and just go in and they'll usually let you rub the toothpaste on their finger. Even that will do some good. This softens the tartar so that you can scrape it off with your thumbnail or it will come off when they chew on um, bones or like, I don't know, dental treats, whatever. The tartar just gets soft and comes off. Sorry, and this is enzymatic, so it just keeps working even after you're done brushing. Um, it keeps working throughout the day. Okay, so um, I start out with my finger, and I just, once they're used to um, having me rub my finger with the toothpaste around it, then I go to a piece of gauze, and you can use a piece of medical gauze and just wrap it around your finger and um, smear that on their teeth. And if you can smear that on their teeth, that will do a good job. You'll be amazed at how much stuff you can get off their teeth with a piece of gauze. And you can just stop right there if you want to. You don't have to go any further. Um, excuse me. A lot of people like to use um, finger toothbrushes where you just insert your finger into the end of the toothbrush and then it just kind of stops right there. It has a little bristle brush on the end of it. You can put that in their teeth, I mean in their mouth, and um, that works really well. I myself don't really like sticking my finger in their mouth. Um, it's smelly. It just isn't my favorite thing to do. I'd rather use a real toothbrush. So um, I will show you right now how I go about doing that. He's totally falling asleep on the grooming table. <laughs> okay. Okay. So first thing is I dip it in water just like I would a normal toothbrush. This right here, the Petrodex, works with grapefruit seed, which is good for you. A lot of people use that as a supplement. And I just smear it into the bristles because if you leave it on the top like you would regular toothpaste, it's going to fall off. So hopefully you can see that it's smeared in. And then because that is not their favorite flavor, even though it has salmon oil in it, I kind of frost it with Petrodex. And Petrodex tastes like chicken. I've never tried it exactly, but I sure smell it. And because Quinn started at eight weeks getting his teeth brushed, with my hand, move that water just in case it gets spilled. Sorry, I don't want to make you all dizzy. Um, he's used to having his teeth brushed. You ready, buddy? And you can see he doesn't freak out about it. He's like, mm, that could be good. So I just lift up his gums and let's see if I can get a good angle here. I just start to brush and I start with that big eye tooth. And I can tell that I have not been brushing lately because we've got a little harder buildup. I'm doing a very good job since COVID started because we are not going out to visit. And then I just brush each tooth. Let's see. There we go. Here we go. We definitely have tartar back there. Stays here a bit dry. And he just keeps looking throughout the entire thing. Smell that tartar. If I keep brushing, that will all be gone in a couple of weeks. If I give him something to chew on in addition to what I'm doing right now. So that doesn't really concern me too much. And I hold his mouth shut to get those little front ones. Just make sure it's smeared on really good on the inside. Oh, little bloody gums in there. That's no fun either, buddy. And then his reward is he gets to lick it. And you can see he isn't traumatized by it. I don't have to do it forever. I don't have to sing happy birthday or Yankee Doodle or any of the songs we had to learn when we were kids. And I make sure he has a very clean tongue. And um, it's not bad for him. Don't ever use human, human toothpaste um, because it is poisonous. 
That's why we spit it out. So that's how you brush your dog's teeth. We already talked a little bit about ears, but I wanted to show you what I do after the bath. Because he's had um, ice scrubbed on the outside of there, I want to make sure I soak up any water that might have gotten in. So I put a cotton ball in, and you can see that there was a little bit more goop that came out with the cotton ball. And now I have a clean ear. Lots of hair, but no ear gunk in there. Can you see your other one? Can you show me your ear? Oh, thank you. So hopefully you can see that. That one didn't even have any ear gunk. So I'm going to keep an eye on that other one just to make sure. See, lots of hair, but it's clean hair. It's full of gunk. So that's what we're looking for. We're also looking for all of this. Make sure you get in all those creases because lots of ear gunk can come out in that. And sometimes I'll take that cotton ball and just make sure nothing is hiding in there. Let's talk feet. The first thing you want to do is make sure that their nails are not sharp. And there are a couple of ways that you can trim their nails. One of them is by using a clipper. Sorry, I should have had it ready. One of them is by using a clipper that looks kind of like this. Um, and I hate these with his nails because they are blacker than black. And as you can see, um, there is no way I can see the clip click on them. And he hates this sucker. As soon as I bring it out, um, usually he, he isn't doing it right now, of course, because he's on video. But um, I have caused many in this room with this clipper, so I really don't like using it. If you do choose to use this or a guillotine, that's the kind you use, um, you need, also need to file them with a um, human nail file, or you need to take them for a walk several days in advance, um, for several days in advance on a sidewalk so that they can get filed down because they can be really sharp. And if those nails were to get somebody like this, they could leave, let's see, let's just take the edge off so I can show you. Sometimes like, no. like that, if you went into a care center and someone had really thin skin, that could totally um, tear through their skin and hurt somebody. So my favorite way of doing nails is the Gremel, and I'm going to teach you how to use it right now and how to start out with your dog using it. It's kind of like toothbrushing. If you start out using a Gremel, um, are going to be scared. So, okay, so the first thing you want to do when you're teaching your dog to love the Dremel is you just leave the Dremel out. When your dog shows interest in the Dremel, like if they <laughs> sees the treat in my hand, if your dog pays interest, yeah, good boy. If your dog shows any interest in the Dremel, you pay him for it with treats. That happens again. So the Dremel's just sitting there. Oh, good job. And he learned how to do this when he was a tiny puppy, when he was like eight or nine weeks old. So the Dremel became this great thing. And you, yes, good boy. So he started doing this when he was tiny. And then after he would do it a couple times, I would put it up on the shelf and I'd be like, oh, yeah, sorry, Bummer, no more Dremel. I know, it's the best thing ever. I'm like, no more Dremel. Socks, huh? I know. And then after a while, I would only take I would take it down. Can you sit? Come, here, come sit. Come sit. Oh, thank you. I would take it down, but um, he only got treats if he touched it with his paw. Oh, good job. Yeah, that will get you a treat. Good job. So this is like a couple weeks later. Good boy. You got it. So now he's touching it with his paw. Good job. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to, now that he knows he's supposed to touch it with his paw, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to see if he'll touch it with it on. I know you're doing all sorts of that, huh? <gasps> Good job. So now it makes a noise and it vibrates. And I'm still doing it on low. But, oh, very good. And this whole time I've been guillotine clipping his nails and he doesn't like it. Oh, yeah, you can't have the whole thing, silly. Whoops, that's huge. Okay, ready? Good boy. Okay, so if you click or train, which I do, then um, you can do that as soon as he touches it. Good job. Okay, so the next step after he's really good at that, whoops, sorry. 
And I would put it right up where he can see it. So like half the day he's looking up there going, oh, please give me more gravel. It's the best paying thing ever. So now um, I'm going to hold, I'm going to pick up his foot and I'm going to put it on there. So now I've taken away the choice and I'm holding it on for longer. Yeah, good job. Now I've taken away the choice and I'm holding his foot on there for a longer period of time. So that makes me, oh, he's still willing to do it though. Good boy, very good. And if he can do that, I'll do it once, put it up on the shelf. Be like, yeah, sorry, no more Dremel, bummer. And he's like, oh, that sucks, no more Dremel, that's my favorite thing ever. So then after a while I take it down, now I introduce this side. So this side, I'm just gonna go like this, still on low, and I just go, <gasps> yeah, good boy. Then I hold it. Okay, thank you, thank you, Oakley. Thanks, buddy. So now I hold it for a little bit longer. Yeah, good boy. And I basically just, you know, thanks, buddy. I basically do that until I've built up to doing the whole toe. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the toe and what I'm looking for. Because um, if you just grind up the toe, you're gonna hurt it because um, it's it gets hot because of the friction. So you wanna just go, the rules are this, you only go for three seconds at a time and then you pull it away, if that, and then, or you go to a different toe and um, you don't go past the quick and you can see the quick even on black nails. So I'm going to show you right now what that looks like. That hurts my nose. So I have actually been using a mask since. So first, I'm grinding down the excess paint. And what I'm looking for is that little white dot in the center of his foot, of his toenail. Can you see that little white dot right there? Right there. Again. You can see there's a little white dot there. Then I'm going to think of it like a pencil. I'm going to go around the pencil. Like that. So, I'm going to think of it like a pencil, um, like I'm sharpening the pencil, and the little white dot is the quick. And I think you can see it. I can see it. Hopefully it focused on that. Um, and I just do that to all of his nails. After each nail, you can give him a treat. Somebody. Although, at this point, I do all of his nails. And then, um, I mean, I do his whole foot, and then give him a treat. So, um... If you do that, his nails will stay short. Another important thing to remember about feet. Another thing to be thinking about with feet, especially with Arctic breeds that have hair going between the pads of their feet. Nope, stand up, buddy. Um, have hair going between the pads of their feet is that these, this hair right here, become excellent dust mops and germ collectors. So what you need to do with any of the breeds, unless you want to bring home um, germs, which right now is incredibly important and has, always has been because we don't want to bring home MRSA or any diarrhea or food leftovers or anything like that that is on the floor for COVID right now. And you comb all that hair up so it's sticking up like that. And then I would recommend getting a pair of baby scissors that has blunt ends on them. I shave all this out um, so that he doesn't have any hair right there. But right now I'm just using these. And just trim any hair that's still sticking out from the pads of his feet. Because that way when he walks, um, he's not going to pick up anything. Because you don't want him picking up anything and then licking it. We already are talking about um, the bucket of water with the bleach in it, and I'll show you what I bring with me, um, but this is another just prevention to make sure 
they don't pick up any germs. Um, and it also won't change the look of your dog at all. And our final suggestion is check the bum before you leave. Um, it, it's really easy for jungleberries to get cut. Um, so make sure that it's well combed out. Make sure there are no little sticky anything stuck there before you walk out the door. And don't worry, your dog doesn't get embarrassed. That's just a people thing. Um, we do. So make sure that's nice and clean and it smells fresh when you walk out. So, um, no mats, um, clean hair, nicely brushed, no hair between the toes, teeth brushed, um, ears clean, just think, start at the nose, go down to the toes, nails trimmed or at least not sharp, and then check the bone. And um, if you bring into a light us like this, um, you will do well in the grooming part of the evaluation. We will stick our nose into them, just to make sure that they don't smell like dog. What do you say, Quinn? What do you say? You say, yay!